Yeah. But one time I was in like, I was in a mastermind group. Basically, if you're not familiar, it's just like a group of investors helping each other to better their businesses. And one guy said to me about house flipping, he was like, if you do it right, house flipping can be cheaper than wholesaling. Interesting. And his point with this was that if you raise capital, okay, it it takes less of your money because you can't raise capital for marketing. Yeah. So I just share that because like that was transformational for me. Mm -hmm. um, so I really lean heavily into raising capital. I'm always looking for money for future deals. I'm always looking for yeah. lessons, et etc. So tell me this, when you first got into wholesaling, did you just go straight into full time? What were you doing while you were trying this wholesaling thing? Yeah, so um, I was working full time in ministry. Um, so okay. I did I did college campus ministry. Um, okay. So I wasn't, uh, normally when I say ministry, everyone asks me like, were you a pastor? No, um, I didn't do any of that. I was, uh, I was working on college campuses um, doing things like uh, just helping college students to grow in their faith, basically. Gotcha. Things from Bible study to, you know, um, different outings or, or group gatherings, things like that. So. Gotcha. Okay. 100%. Yeah, that's... It's, it's crazy that you went from that to wholesaling, which there's an ethical way to do wholesaling. Yeah. But wholesaling in general has a bad rap. Yeah. You know, and everybody thinks that we're trying to get, you know, get something over on the seller and, and you know, we're, we're, we're trying to steal all their equity and, and so on and so forth. And it's not. If I, I truly am out there as a wholesaler to help these homeowners if they want to sell. If they don't, great, I'll move on to the next person. You yeah. know, and I tell this to everybody, I'm not here to convince anybody to sell. Yeah. You know, yeah. Ca cash deals like everyone, especially for the past two years, every seller has thought they want cash deals. Yeah. But in reality, like in a, in a normal market, in today's market, <laughs> if you're getting a cash deal, it's at a significant discount. Correct. Yeah. And so like, it's not for everyone. Like no. a, what, I guess what wholesalers are offering, that's not, that's not for everyone. In fact, I would say it's probably not even for most people. Like right. as a wholesaler, you're just, you're talking to a large volume of people and trying to find those people with a particular need that you can meet with a cash offer. Correct. And yeah. so, so it's like, yeah, and this is part of why, like, it, it didn't even cross my mind that wholesaling would be unethical. Mm -hmm. um, just because, like, it meets a need. Like, if you've ever yeah. met a person that, like, truly needs to sell their house yesterday. Yeah. It's like, what is the right thing to do to not make an offer? and make them sit out for another 30, 60, 90 days plus, yep. especially in this market. It's like, you know, if somebody really needs to sell, good luck getting it even under contract in under 30 days in most markets. Right. So, you know, and, and that's the thing, like I had, I had somebody reach out to me about wanting to buy their house in Detroit and yeah. You know, she wanted close to, uh, you know, still a discount from retail, but but pretty close to it. And I had to be honest with her. I said, you're going to get the most amount of money by putting it up on the market and seeing what you can get. Yeah. Okay. Um, this is the price where I would have to pay. And I work with other investors 
and that's the reason why and i was completely transparent with you know they pay me my fee and so on and so forth and i you know she was happy that i was open honest and transparent with her you yeah. know i i told her that she could you know call me anytime if she has any questions but honestly you know this is my recommendation but but you, you know with that you can take uh you know we we're talking about sub two deals talking this I, I i had i told her i was like it all depends on your end goal what you want to do you know so do you want to go find a place and rent then maybe you know what you can get a little bit more money on seller finance and just get some yeah. money coming in if not if you need the money to try to buy a new place then on yeah. on market deals that's your that's where you go you know so yeah yeah it's it's definitely um it's a it's a good um it's it's a good place to start it's a good place to learn the business yeah. i'm really glad i started wholesaling and actually you what you were saying you reminded me of of what i found to be a very useful technique for like working with people looking to sell their house because somebody said to me just what you're saying right now of like just be transparent with sellers yep. and so like i was like oh is it really that easy not that i was hiding anything before no but, yeah you know it's just like you know sometimes you got to be careful just to not talk too much <laughs> yep <laughs> and and so somebody said that to me and I was like, oh, is it really that easy? And so the next time I was talking to a seller, which was probably a few days later, I was like, they're like, yeah, I, I want a cash offer. I, I need to sell and stuff like that. And I was like, are you sure? Like, I'm gonna, just so you know, I'm gonna get this under contract for a much lower price. I'm gonna sell it for a much higher price than what you're willing to sell it to me. Um, and I'm not really going to have to buy this. You know, like I I, yeah. I forget exactly what I said, but I yeah, like yeah. I like laid it out there, yeah. almost trying to convince them not to sell it. And yeah. they're like, yeah, that's cool. You're like, wow. okay. Yeah, because the thing but, is, is they, <laughs> they want speed, they want speed and convenience. They won't want to have to do anything. They don't want to have to run, you know, you know, go on the MLS, have an open house and then wait and see, you know, yeah. um, they don't want any of that. You know, I was talking with a realtor the other day, an old realtor of mine before I got into real estate, uh, you know, and I told him I've been doing this for about two years. He goes, oh, do you have your license? I go, no, I don't. Yeah. Oh, I, I and you haven't got sued yet? And I'm like, no, I have a business. I have an LLC. Oh, that doesn't that doesn't save you, and that doesn't. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, it kind of does. But you know, you can keep thinking what you're thinking. You're a typical agent yeah. that you know yeah, doesn't want to do anything. <laughs> and I'm like, you know, yeah. I'm like, yes, I know I'll eventually have to get my license because laws will eventually go that way but at yeah. this time i don't need to yeah you know? so uh yeah same with me i actually i haven't gotten licensed either um not against it but it you know i i see plenty of opportunities like i i'll say for my for my part i see the value of partnering with other people yes. and if that can if that can bring um, the right person into my network that's like willing to work with me because, hey, I'm not a competing realtor. Yeah. Like, I mean, I know plenty of investors that are realtors that still, you know, work with other agents and, yeah. and stuff like that. But I think there's something that's not super helpful, like a mindset that we can get that I see with investors that are licensed where it's like well why do i need anyone else like why would i need oh, any yeah. other and, and stuff like that and i i just think that's a very like naive perspective 
to yep. be honest. Because it's like, even the most novice realtor comes across crazy deals. Like I, I literally, yep. I just, so here's one of the benefits that I found of um, not getting my license. So I have a realtor that I've built a really good relationship with. Um, mm -hmm. We bought a number of houses off the MLS um, that we flipped. Um, and so I just got a call and he had a sub two deal for me. Okay, wow, that was, yeah. That was MLS listed. That, so that's, it, that's usually unheard of. Yeah, yeah. And if if you're not familiar with sub two, anyone watching, it's just, it's a technique of seller financing, just to keep it simple. Right. Um, so, um, and it it's a very, I would say like, being able to structure a deal in that way is like pretty sought after by um, anyone who knows what it is. And so he found, he found through another realtor, an MLS listed property, the the person's motivated to sell and they're looking to sell sub two. Okay. They, they offered to me. <laughs> yeah. So it's not like, it's not like you went in there and be like, yeah. listen, I can't come up to your price. If we can make terms and you had to try to convince them and figure out what yeah. that is, you know, that's usually what we have to do. Yeah. You know? And so, so just, just think though, like if, I, if I had went the route that so many people do, where they're like, oh, well, I'll just get my license. And why do I need to work with any other realtors? You know, right. if you went that route, I would have never heard about that deal. Exactly. I, I love working with people, whether you're new or whether you're experienced. I actually think with you being super experienced, if you are not open, open-minded, it is a detriment to your business. Yeah. Okay. If you think, oh, you've only been in the business for a year and I don't, you know, I don't want to work with you, that 100% a detriment to your business, you are losing business. Yep. Okay. You I have to think outside the box. You yes. have to be intentionally marketing yourself and your business. Yep. And actually, networking pro tip that I, I'll just share just as a yeah. freebie for everyone. Um, when I'm networking, like when I'm at, especially real estate networking events and stuff like that. Uh -huh. What you'll often find in like decent sized groups, you'll find like kind of the the people that everyone wants to talk to, whether it's mm -hmm. the speaker or the, you know, or whatever, yep. like that are there all the time that everyone knows. You get those people and then you get the clear newbies. Yeah. I avoid the people that are there every time. And I <laughs> seek out newbies. Yeah. Now, my reason for that is because those newbies, at least some of them will eventually end up doing deals. Some of them will maybe even eventually build sizable businesses and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And if I make first contact with them, and if I'm able to help them in some way, yep. that's who they're gonna bring a deal that they need a partner on. 100%. You know? And you, you never know because they, they might be there because they have a deal to sell already. A, you know? Exactly. So I had uh, in another interesting story. This exact situation, I was at a real estate meetup. I saw an older gentleman who was clearly new. Like it was okay. definitely the first time there. For sure. <laughs> okay. Like you could spot him. <laughs> yeah. Um, and so I went up and I, I talked to him immediately. And... Uh, and as I started talking to him, it, it turns out he was there because he had some money that he wanted to put to work in real gotcha. estate, you know? And so it, I forget how much he said. I think he said he had like 250,000 cash that okay. he was like, that he was looking to put to work. And it's like, you know, especially if you structure it right, it's like, that could be enough for, for three flips. You know, you know, if you, right. if you work it properly with like hard money or, you know, whatever else, um, you know, that, that could secure three deals. And if all three of those, you could make, you know, 25,000 profit, you know, that's, that's pretty good. Like that, oh. that could have been a very valuable conversation. <laughs> oh yeah. Because the thing is, think of it this way. 
you know, you're going to make a 25 grand profit on that. He's going to come home with a, what, 10% interest more than he's going to make in the stock market, you know, yeah. and he's going to be happy and want to re give you more money, you know? Yeah. So, and it, it's just like, uh, you know, Julie said, they, they called an agent tonight to see if they want to do seller financing on their, uh, you know, on their listing. And he said, mind you, I have no idea what I'm doing, what I'm doing, you know, and that's yeah. the thing. You, you just have to check it out.